Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, the sun's shining. That's really something. That picks everybody's spirits up, doesn't it? And it's warm again. So welcome to, welcome to worship today. Glad to see everyone. Welcome to everyone who might be watching and listening on YouTube today. We're glad to have you. I have a couple of announcements. Um, I want to remind everybody that during the service, you'll see a little folder in your pew. If you'll fill that up out and fold it in half and put it in the offering plate as it comes around, it is very helpful to the ushers and to us, especially if you're a visitor and we're welcoming you for the first time. We're glad to have you. Um, to let you know, there um, are several on our prayer list today. And um, I'm going to read the names now so we can be focused on them when it comes time for remembering folks in prayer. So today we remember Trudy Van Loon um, and her husband Bob had passed and they were members of our church. David Bauer, his family, Susan Daniels, Wayne King, Carol Kaler, Gary Overstreet, Anna Smith, Jim Taylor, Marcella Woods, Margot Thompson, Estelle Dobbins, Mary Childress, Nicholas Keeling, Jason Hammond, Herb Miller, Patty Walker Jordan, and Fran Hart. And there may be others that, that you want us to pray for and let us know about that. And there are always our prayers for the unspoken. Um, at this time, Chris, I think, has a, an announcement. Apostle Paul wrote that we should rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Let us pause now to remember Robert Van Loon's loved ones and friends in prayer, uh, particularly his wife Trudy and his family, and thereby help them bear their burden of grief. Let us pray. Almighty God, you raised Jesus Christ from the dead. You are the God of the resurrection. We pray that you would be near to those who grieve the loss of Robert Van Loon. Comfort them, support them, draw them close to you and close to one another. Fill their eyes with the light of your promises that they may see beyond human sight a home within your love where pain is gone and frail flesh turns to glory. Banish all fear, O God, and wipe away the painful tears. Let their grieving be for healing, and let their hope be fixed upon Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. I also need to share that our congregation has lost an individual who has been worshiping with us frequently in the last six months. His name is Kirk Wright, and he normally sits in the very back with Gwen, and we don't have a lot of information yet about um, arrangements, but we will remember him next week with a white rose. Thank you. And so now, if you would like, uh, visit with one another for a few minutes. Good to see you. I 
Wasn't that fun? It's so much fun to get up and walk around and talk to folks. Now it's time to get settled for the prelude. with a reading from the book of Revelations. The writer of Revelation recounted a vision of Christ's reign in heaven, which is appropriate for this All Saints Day to hear. There was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who was seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen. Amen. 
blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and worship him day and night within his temple, and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes.
switching microphones to the associate. <coughs> We come to our time of honesty before God. We have only to look in the mirror, recall the hurtful words we spoke this week, or remember the person in need that we hurried past to know that we are no saints. Yet, like them, it is us with our feelings and foolish lives who are called by God to carry the good news into the world. Let us confess our sins that we might set them down and pick up the gospel as we pray together, saying, On this long journey we call on, holy God, we too often fail to live as your people. Instead of letting glory shine, we get caught up in the ugliness of worldliness. Our own pursuits occupy the majority of our time, with little effort to reach out to those with hardships or who suffer. And yet, they are the ones you described as blessed. Have mercy and forgive us, creator of life. Relieve us of the burdens of our sins, so that we might sing of the one who can transform us from sinners into saints, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. look around, you can see them. Those to your left, those to your right, those in front of you and behind you. They, like you, are God's saints, ordinary, everyday, forgiven people of God. Baptized, called, and gifted, we will go to share the Christ flame with everyone we meet, for we are God's children, forgiven and made whole. Thanks be to God.
and Taylor. Let us bow our heads for our prayer for illumination. Thank you, Lord, for the comfort of familiar words that challenge us in different and surprising ways each time we hear them. As your gospel is read, may the Holy Spirit speak through it and enlighten us anew. Amen. Our text for this All Saints Day is a very familiar one, and I would like to give you a little background for it that you might perhaps hear these familiar words in a new way. Commonly called the Beatitudes, in them Jesus we see Jesus talking to a group of people and generally considered, and as he's talking to them, he takes categories of people that would generally con be considered to be unfortunate and he pronounces them blessed. Jesus draws a contrast between what is in the current moment and what will be in God's future kingdom. Doing this, he points out the contradiction between outward appearance that we observe and interpret as opposed to the longer term or bigger picture reality as God sees it. What appears to be true on the surface is not the final reality, we are told. What we learn from this is that what is valuable to the world is not what God prizes. What God values, on the contrary, is often diminished by the world or dismissed by the world. The Beatitudes follow what we now know as a very familiar construction. It says, blessed are, and then there's some naming of a group of people, 
And this is the condition which assures the blessedness. And then Jesus says, what makes them blessed? Or what is the blessing that they will receive? There is a website called Hebrew, like Hebrew language, Hebrew for Christians. And in that, on that website, it suggests that although the early Christian texts were written in Greek, Jesus himself, when he was speaking these words, most assuredly would have been speaking in Hebrew. And it turns out that in Hebrew, there is no verb at all in the opening phrase of each of the Beatitudes. So what we translate in English as blessed are or blessed is, that is or that being verb is not present in the Hebrew at all. So what is translated into English as blessed are the, let's say, peacemakers, would more rightly be stated as an exclamation. Oh, the happiness of the peacemakers. Oh, the blessedness of the peacemakers. And so the first beatitude would read, Oh, the blessedness of the poor of spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Now, I also want to share that the verb that links the condition assuring the blessedness to the eventual outcome that imparts the blessing in the Greek is a definitive declaratory verb. And so what does that mean? Um, when, so in the Greek language, there are lots of ways of saying things that we don't have all the nuance in the English language to say. But basically, the meaning is that Jesus makes this a statement of future fact. It's not like hyperbole. It's not a, um, oh, like, probably this is going to happen. Jesus is saying to his listeners, this is a fact. Because of this, this other thing will come to pass. So now, with that, let us hear the words of Matthew 5, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, after, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, and he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, 